YouTubers, it going the Godows is back after day three of the NFL draft here with the best picks in each round of day three. We have a similar video for each day of the NFL draft on our channel. A lot of content, actually a lot more to get to. We have our undrafted free agency video tonight. Updates on that on Twitter. But draft is over. We keep rolling. Best picks in round four, the Broncos. Uh, we're going to mention them a couple times. Same with the Titans, the Ravens, Chiefs. Uh, but Troy Franklin was a mega steal for the Denver Broncos. Uh, some reports about maybe he doesn't have the passion for the game. And who knows? But that's maybe why he dropped. He did have some drops on some routine plays. But he makes some crazy catches tracking the football on, in off-balance situations down the field. Tracks the ball as good as anyone. Has downfield speed. He's constantly open. Can work the boundary. Crazy productive. The best receiver in Oregon football. That's a pretty good program, too, history. And he did it with quarterback Bo Nix, who was also with the Denver Broncos. So maybe that made the Bo Nix pick look a little bit better. But I, I like Frank Franklin. He has some flaws, but his highs, like his big moments, are so high that there's talent there. Cedric Gray, as you guys know, is my linebacker too. I mean, it's one of those guys you just can't overthink. Uh, you know, he he's what stands up the most is he can cover. Really instinctive in coverage, reads the quarterback. But he led all power of five defenders and tackles. So doing something right there, you combine that with the coverage skills and he can rush the quarterback if you need him to, you can't really overthink it. It's a really good linebacker, really good value. So the Titans get a good one there. Uh, Brandon Dorless, I love another Oregon Duck. I, I was probably higher on him than everyone. Um, he played one year, he played inside. Next year, he played outside. And this year, he played a little bit of both. I love him inside. He put on a little bit of weight and strength at the combine. Says he could play inside. He could play multiple positions, though. I like his rush moves from the inside. I think he's pretty instinctive. He gets his hands on the football a lot. So I compared him to Justin Matabuke. And remember, Mat Matabuke wasn't really anybody right off the bat either. Uh, I think he can have a similar career path. So I love that pick for the Falcons. Ravens added a much needed receiver. They like speed. You know, the guys have to have a certain speed profile. Tez Walker has that. Uh, but I like that he's an outside receiver because the Ravens seem to add the same type over and over again, you know, inside slot receivers. So they get an outside guy with some potential. Dolphins get a Dolphins type of a running back here. Jalen Wright, home run hitting, super speedy, but he's got a good build to him. He breaks tackles. Um, he was a tough projection maybe for some because Tennessee's system is so – it's like spreads defense out so much that he rarely saw like in, like stacked boxes or anybody in the box. So he had wide open lanes, but it's pretty easy to judge running backs. Like this guy sees the hole, he hits it, he goes, he, he, he can break tackles, he can make you miss, he can outrun you, and he can catch the football. Had some fumbles, I think it was two years ago. Um, you know, Mostert's not going to be around forever – Achan looks like he's something. I don't think he's an every down back, especially with some of the durability concerns, but he's really good. I think Wright is the future RB1 in Miami. Bucky Irvin was my running back six, like him. Remind me of Kyron Williams, who's dominating for the Rams right now, like small but tough. He'll lower his shoulder. He'll pop you. The contact bounce is there. He's quick, not super fast. Catch the ball pretty well. He's just fun. Like, he's just really fun. Uh, Rashad White and him, going to be fun with Tampa. Uh, speaking of Tampa, TJ Tampa, he was a tricky one too. He was scheme dependent, like he needed a certain scheme, uh, and, and he was four fives range. So it's not slow, but and it's 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 enough, you know. But not the fastest guy in a position where you want fast guys. But he can play. I like his press ability. I like his upside and cover too, because you know he can make you think it's man coverage. He can read the quarterback. He's really good underneath. Not as great downfield. Um, but he's a guy that I liked better than the fourth round, but I'm not really shocked that he dropped a little bit just because how scheme dependent he is. And then back-to-back -back picks I like for the Chiefs, or there's one in between. But Jared Wiley was my number four tight end. I think a safe pick, really consistent. He's going to come in there uh, you know, and, and learn from Travis Kelsey, who's not going to be around for, even though he's playing very high at a very high, high level, he's not going to be around that around that much longer, I suppose. So could he be that next Travis Kelsey going to be tough to be talent-wise, but he can be that guy, and that's a great spot. Like, that's a great spot. And then Jaden Hicks could have been a round three or better safety. Um, I, when we talked about him in the pre-draft process, I said he was better as a strong safety than free. He's good in the box, and he needs a man coverage team because he can man up on some tight ends, and that's what the Chiefs do. That's what they do. So it's a, it feels like a Chiefs guy here. Um he had a really flashy play against Washington. I thought he actually overall played pretty well against Washington, who went to the national championship game. 
Um, so if I had to highlight three, definitely Troy Franklin, epic steal, big time receiver, good fit. He's going to play with the Broncos. He's, they need him. They're gonna, and he's got Bo Nix. Cedric Gray was my linebacker too. Just don't overthink that one. And Brandon Dorless is my defensive tackle number four, versatile, a lot of upside, uh, pass deflection machine. So I actually loved those ones. Round five, my favorites. Cam Hart from Notre Dame. He was kind of a lockdown guy. They actually they threw away from him. I think there was a reason for that. Teams when they, when playing against him, um, he's a man coverage corner. But I thought his reps in zone looked pretty good. He liked the length. Looked good in Senior Bowl week. Uh, so the Chargers grab him. They had an interesting draft, but I did like that one. Cedric Van Pran feels like a plug and play center from Georgia, and the Bills could use a guy there. Like he potentially can get on the field very early. Uh, Bears trade back into the draft to take Austin Booker. Pretty good value there. Really good, really solid pass rusher. He's really young, so that says upside. He has limited experience. That usually says upside. I think he's pretty, I don't want to say fully polished, but pretty polished for the limited experience and how young he is. Uh, he is a tough, eva- not really a tough evaluation. Like I know how to eva- and I know the scouting report, but it's a little tough because he's pretty polished for how young he is, limited experience. He has like finesse moves. Like Harold Landry like moves is my comparison for limited experience. It's pretty good, but usually an important thing for pass rushers is explosive get off, and, and that's something you really can't coach. But again, he does have limited reps. He, he's a little too patient, you know. So I couldn't have him super high because of that. But there are some things there that you really want to work with here. Um, and he was pretty productive this year. So the Bears badly needed another pass rusher. They get him. Another Broncos one. Chris Abrams drain. I thought he was a third round pick. That actually could have went in the second. He was a receiver recruit turned corner. I thought he had a really good year covering the boundary for, for the Bronco or excuse me for Missouri. And he's going to do the same thing with, with Denver. Probably going to run a lot of cover three still. And then some cover four would fit well for him. I think he could run man as well, but. You kind of can see in a good way that he used to be a receiver. So I liked him. Uh, another corner I just really liked, a fan of his game, Jarvis Brownlee. So we see the Broncos and the Titans pop up again. Um, I don't know how much Brownlee's going to play at first because the Titans are loaded at corner. Um, they added two outside guys this year, and they have a good slot guy in Roger McCreary. But Brownlee actually can do both. So he's depth for outside, and he's depth for McCreary on the inside because he could do both. He's physical. He can press. He can play man. He can play zone. I, I thought he- he's just fun because the ball is in someone's hands or it's thrown, and he attacks underneath. You know, he flies around the field. Uh, I thought he uh, did really well in the senior bowl process as well. Um, so I- just a player you like there. And Audrick Estime was my running back five. I think teams and people, uh, the Broncos again, I think they overthought him because you watch him on tape. I mean, he was super productive. You watch him on tape, like this is a big physical guy that lowers his shoulder, he breaks tackles, but man, he jukes guys out of their jock straps. Like he's got some nasty cuts. He'll jump over guys constantly. He'll run, he'll accelerate, run past guys. He had some crazy plays this year. Um, you know, so if you're going by watching the film, a guy this big should not be able to move like this. Uh, and then he ran a slower 40 at the, at the combine was surprising. And I think people overreact from that. He ran a much faster one at, at, at the pro day. But if you watch on tape, it's like, this is a big body guy that can move. So I think people overthought that him and Javante Williams, that is going to be powerful backfield. Uh, estimates going to be good. He's going to be good. Christian Jones. Um, solid tackle for Texas, not incredible value, pretty good value, but it's just something the Cardinals needed. They needed a, a right tackle, like a, a quality right tackle, that future starter. I think that's what that is uh, in, in Christian Jones. Tyrone Tracy, I liked a lot. I actually had him running back seven. He was a receiver all of his career. Purdue used him as a running back this year. He looked like he'd been playing running back his whole career. Pretty crazy. Um, you know, so he looks like a natural, he, you just by his build and his play style, um, you know, so he's got athleticism and size and that pass catching ability because he used to play receiver. He's going to play for the Giants. He is going and like he might be viewed as a little bit of a raw prospect because he hasn't played a whole uh, running back position a whole lot. I think he's a little further along than people give him credit for. And he's going to play for the Giants because they could use him. Uh, and then Javon Solomon uh, from Troy. I was higher on him than most people as well. Uh, explosive, very productive pass rusher. Troy used him off the edge and inside. He actually had slightly more snaps inside or over the tackle, um, which says, and he was good in there, and it's good he has an experience, but kind of says he kind of played out out of position a little bit, and he still was very good. The Bills needed a pass rusher. He might play a bit this year, uh, and he's explosive. He's productive. Um, he's, I think he's going to be solid. It's my favorite picks of round five. 
were the Broncos, Broncos, Abrams, Drain, SMA. And I like that Bills one I just because I think he's going to fit. I almost put Tracy because I really like how he's going to play this year. I, you know, I equally could have put put him. Like Solomon and Tracy on the same boat where they're going to play a bit, I think, this year. Um, so it looks like the Bills did pretty good in round five. Round six, uh, Seahawks getting getting Laumea from Utah. He played guard. He switched to tackle. He wasn't as good at tackle, not nearly, but he was all right. And it just said, you know, looking at him, it's like a lot of upside at guard. Put him back there. So I think he could be a really good guard. Uh, Malik Washington, super productive slot receiver from Virginia. Gets open, catches the ball. He had some nasty catches. Um, that speed that the Dolphins look for. Makai Wingo, it's M-E-K-H-I. Graphics guy jacked that up. Uh, from LSU, uh, he put the world on notice that first game against Florida State. He, he's super twitchy, explosive, uh, productive, um, you know, just undersized. But the Lions get a, a good ball player there. Uh, I didn't like how the Lions started their their draft today. I wasn't thrilled with the earlier picks today or how they operated, but they, they knocked round six out of the park. Um DJ James for the Seahawks, uh, another corner. They got both Auburn corners. I like James a lot. Former Oregon Duck, went to Auburn. Uh, he played outside for them. He was really good covering underneath. He was really good attacking downhill, sticky, athletic. I, I think that translates as a, as a slot corner. I think he can be a really good one too. So when Witherspoon, who plays inside and outside, when he's outside, they can use James on the inside. Tanner McLaughlin was my number three tight end. Um, he dropped. Apparently there was an injury. Uh, a late in, like during this process, uh, but he also is lacking in the length department, which which is not kind of important for tight ends. But if you watch him play, an absolute weapon for Arizona. The guy can run routes. The guy can read coverages, sit down, catch the ball, pretty good after the catch. Like don't overthink that one. The guy is a weapon at the tight end position. I I I think he's the, the, if he's healthy, the Bengals are going to use him. Jaden Cromedy was one of my favorite sleepers in in the draft from Mississippi State. Long, explosive, physical, more productive than the stat show. Thought he played pretty well against LSU. It's a really good comp there. Uh, so Panthers get a quality interior defense lineman. In a, if we're talking about a deep sleeper, I mean, this wasn't great value, I'm, I'm saying, with this. But I just like Travis Glover. I thought he was one of my favorite deep sleeper guys. Um, tackle from Georgia State. Like, he's just nasty. Like, he got a good push-pull um, you know, or deals with that well from the – from edge rushers, like they're not going to knock him off balance at all is what I'm trying to say. And he knocks them off balance, like puts them in the dirt constantly. Um, and I like that the, I like that a team that develops in nose offense alignment got him. I can, I, it's just something I can see like a few years down the line. Maybe it's not a few, maybe it's a little more that Glover is playing for, for the green Bay Packers, or, you know, or, or starting for them. So I, I don't know. I can kind of just see it there. Uh, and then we got uh, one of the steals of the draft, and uh, the Lions knocked round six out of the park. And the Lions, I've said it, Brad Holmes, every year he's been a GM in Detroit, he's always picked one of my, like, guys from my guys list, at least one. No more, Nobody has more of those guys in the Lions, and the, I didn't think they, they were going to do it. They had one more pick left, and they did it. I was a big Mahogany fan. I was higher on him than most. I am not sure why he dropped. There has to be something weird there. Uh, right guard for Boston College, efficient nasty like fits that Lions motto like he'll get upfield and, and knock somebody out he's always looking to, to, to hit somebody I love that pick you know li again I didn't love the way the Lions started day three but the, the round six they knocked out of the park and Bo Lemur is a safe pick and play center guard he's to play center he can get on the field early on uh for the Rams my favorite picks were DJ James thought he was underrated I love his upside inside McLaughlin was my number three tight end um, super athletic. I mean, just gets the job done at a high level. And Mahogany was an absolute steal. And then round seven, um, not as many eye-popping eye ones, but uh, it's round seven. But there's some good picks. Uh, Javante Jean Bap Baptist needs to add a little bit more weight and strength, but he was good. He played for Ohio State, but played for Notre Dame recently. Good for Notre Dame. Uh, length, very lengthy and very athletic. Uh, Dan Quinn gets to work with him. Trey Taylor is just fun to watch. Uh, like him at strong safety. Awareness, reactions are there. He's a good football player from Air Force, so the Raiders get him. Uh, Brennan Rice, which I think he was a little overhyped. Um, this was good value, but close to the range he should go because he doesn't get a consistent enough separation. But um, Jerry Rice is obviously his father, so he's got it in him. And then uh, really good contested catcher as well. 
Uh, MJ Devonshire, another one for the another good DB for the Raiders. He's got the measurables and the athletic profile. Like if you kind of combine everything you look for for like what what good corners have in terms of traits, he's actually got him. He's a little inconsistent, but a pretty good playmaker. I thought that was a pretty good value pick. Jaheim Bell, Florida State, really good after the catch. Uh, solid value pick for the for the Patriots there. Taj Washington, I actually thought was the better of USC's receivers. Um, you know, another guy that gets open, pretty speedy. Uh, James Williams for the for the Titans coming from Miami. He's a safety. Um, you could see his upside at linebacker, but he does all of his damage from the box. Uh, can man up tight ends, and I think that's what Denard Wilson is kind of looking for. A guy that you know he's not going to be anywhere near Kyle Hamilton, but uh, kind of a, a longer safety that can be physical, can man up guys in the box. Um, you know, so that's a really good fit and really good value. Michael Pratt thought he would go a lot earlier, not super flashy, but very productive, accurate quarterback from Tulane. The Packers grab him, uh, and then Marcus Harris. I love that pick. Auburn defensive tackle, considered undersized, doesn't really play like it though. He sheds blocks, like he he just throws guys off him. Um, you know, swim move is really good, and he was very productive this year. I, I just like the Texans needed an interior defensive lineman, and they got a good one here. I, I could see D'Amico Ryan's work with him and him playing uh, pretty early on in his career. So my favorites from round seven, I'll go Trey Taylor, James Williams, couple safeties there, and then Marcus Harris, uh, defensive tackle. So. A lot of big overall winners. I mentioned them throughout this, but if I had to highlight some, I think it was obvious the Denver Broncos, the Tennessee Titans are far and away at the top. Not that the other ones are, I guess, are that. Maybe they're not that far off, but the Broncos got some mega steals, and I think those guys will make an impact for them uh, right away. Titans, same thing. Some really good steals and guys that can make an impact come in and play for them, um, could possibly start for them. So they're... Broncos Titans got a bunch of steals, bunch of really good impact picks there. They 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 knocked day three out of the park. Uh, the Chiefs, they did well too. We highlighted them a few times. They got some really good Chiefs like fits, uh, and they got better today. And then you know, and there's other teams too, Ravens, Packers. Um, I mean, there's multiple teams I mentioned throughout this video, but the Bills are the toughest that were to leave out of the top three. A very balanced, consistent day three. Uh, guys that are going to help them, and maybe maybe one or two of them could actually start by the end of the year too. So they did a really good job. But the Broncos and the Titans absolutely killed it today. I thought I was, um, you know, and they had more picks than what we just talked about. They just had, they had other pretty solid picks as well uh, coming down to the end. So uh, we've kind of felt this as it was kind of getting going. Um. You know, that they were having a really good day. But it, other than the teams I mentioned, yeah, the Packers, Ravens, yeah, a few other teams we mentioned throughout this. But I'm um, going to get to work on some undrafted free agency news on Twitter in that video that we always do. And there will be a 2025 NFL mock draft that we'll do. We always do that way too early. Um, but uh, in, in the very near future, maybe t possibly tomorrow. So uh, check out all of our content that we have on the channel covering the draft. There is more to come. Uh, but that's going to do it. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.